Thank you. Okay, so I figured that whenever we have a Latin American gathering, it's good to talk about the elephant in the room. And of course, that's, uh, in my case, for sure, is to talk about politics. Um, but I won't be talking about the Bolivarian Revolution or the neo neoliberal IMF policies of the 90s. I don't care about that. I'm going to talk about my experience, my personal experience, trying to hack politics in Latin America and what I learned so far uh, in that process. Um, in 2012, uh, with a group of colleagues, friends, activists uh, in the city of Buenos Aires, we started uh, the development of Democracy OS. Democracy OS is an open source free software to basically get informed, debate, and vote. The key thing there is that it's open source. It's a free uh, open source uh, software project. And when we started uh, with Democracy OS, um, I knew from day zero that we didn't want to do just an online survey or an online polling tool. We wanted to do something that had some kind of institutional impact, not adding pressure to the system, but literally impacting and changing the logic of the system. So that's why we created the Partido de la Red, uh, the Net Party, or the Peers Party. That's the translation I'm going for these days. Um, the Peers Party is a Trojan horse. Uh, it's basically a political party that proposes candidates that are committed to always vote according to what citizens decide on Democracy OS. So the open source software and the political party uh, belong together. Um, Democracy OS has uh, today, I think, over a thousand uh, watchers on GitHub. You can download the entire source code. It has been translated into 18 languages. It has contributors from many places around the world. And it's always a, a surprise to find every week a new instance of Democracy OS uh, anywhere around the world. So it's, uh, it's really incredible what open source can do. Uh, in terms of uh, organic growth of uh, technology. And uh, the Partido de la Red uh, was a huge challenge. Uh, to, to start a political party, I, I, I started private companies, uh, went through the venture capital road, I did uh, non-profits, uh, every kind of organization, political parties, completely different animal, is, is, is a huge challenge. So I figured it would be good to share with you today some of the ingredients that took to actually make a, political, a new political party uh, in the city of Buenos Aires, Argentina, a place, like Diego said, of passionate uh, people, especially when it's about politics and football. Um, so the first challenge for us was to get signatures. Uh, and we, from day zero, we knew we had to get in the city of Buenos Aires, 4,000 signatures. And for us, uh, developers, it's like 4,000 signatures. That's super easy. Just put a tweet out there and collect the signatures in forms, and then we, we get the party. Completely wrong. Apparently, the political system still works on these things uh, they call ink and paper. And uh, you have to complete those signatures in handwritten form by triplicate. Um, and uh, it, it had to be 4,000 real people. Usually, parties in Argentina, uh, they just present fake signatures and they get the party recognition. We could have taken that road, but we wanted to get real signatures. And at the beginning, we were a, a small team of uh, 15, 20 activists and idealists and that we obviously uh, reached to our families, to our friends. But uh, 4,000 is a big number, so we had to go uh, into the streets and do campaigning and sharing this idea with a lot of people in the streets to get those 4,000 signatures, and uh, we were able to get the party uh, in, in four months, uh, ready to run for elections in 2013. Uh, so that was uh, an interesting experience, going in the streets and start talking to people about politics in this, like we were aliens, like... Uh, Yes, uh, you can use the internet to vote and your representative will. And even though to us the idea sounds very cool, to a lot of people, uh, uh, like political speech is automatically you are wired to be extremely skeptical. So it was a real challenge to, to figure how we were able to uh, engage more people uh, into this 
new way of understanding politics. Then we had, when we had the party, we had to do uh, a campaign with almost zero budget. Uh, so we did a communicaton, uh, like a hackathon, but for building communication pieces. And um, in 48 hours, during a weekend, uh, 50 people that were part of the party, friends and, and talented, uh, creative people, uh, came in and in two days we did every single communication piece we used throughout the three month campaign. We did videos, uh, memes, uh, uh, any kind of viral thing that we could think of. We just did it right away and uh, it was an incredible way of doing uh, the campaign with literally zero budget. Um, and then the, the weirdest thing that happened to us. Um, we, we always kept this metaphor of the Trojan horse because it's, we consider the candidate of the net party someone that is not, it looks like a traditional politician running for uh, office, running for Congress, but uh, he, his entire political capital is tied to this promise that he will always vote according to what citizens decide. So it's, it's, a, it's a politician that's actually all the citizens behind that politician, in, hidden inside that politician. So we kept on playing with the Trojan horse metaphor, and one day one of the peers of the net party went to a carpenter in the neighborhood of La Boca and said, are you able to do a Trojan horse? And the guy said, yes, of course, I can do it. Uh, I have all this wood and uh, give me one week. One week later, we find ourselves with a huge Trojan horse and we had to figure how to move the Trojan horse throughout the city. Uh, it only costed us $400, 4,000 pesos, so it was like, and it was amazing because then we went through the avenues of Buenos Aires with a massive Trojan horse and everyone looks at you and it's like, what the hell is that? And people, you know, it was a good statement to make where uh, we're not just nerds doing politics on Twitter. Now we are on the streets and we have this incredible presence and people approached us and we were able to talk to the neighbors and uh, the Trojan horse was incredible. Like one of the peers of the Net Party said, we didn't do a campaign with marketing, we did it with a piece of art. And then when things started to take off, you have like politics, it's not really a much uh, fun environment. It's actually a pretty scary environment. Um, and let me tell you an anecdote to illustrate what the dark side in politics actually means. Um, during the campaign I had a troll, a, a troll that every single day from 8 a.m. in the morning to 1 a.m. in the next day, every day throughout the three months of the campaign kept trashing me all the time on Twitter. And when I blocked him, he kept on trashing all the contacts that I, like insane. So one day I'm fed up and I try to reach this guy and tell him, hey, wanna meet over a coffee? Let's talk uh, about, you know, what's, what do you think about the net party? What do you think about us? Like, we are all new in this thing of politics, we try to, do our best, we have no hidden agendas, we are just uh, love this idea of improving democracy with technology. And the guy said, sure, but give me a call first. This is my phone number, 156-00-0000. And then he says, nice number, right? And I'm looking at this phone number on the email with six zeros in a row, and it's actually very weird, because who the hell has a phone number with six zeros in a row? Obviously, I had to call. I had to figure if this number is real. So I called the guy. And um, I started in this uh, psychotic conversation with a person. He actually answers the phone, so the phone is real. Uh, and uh, actually, I called him, and he says, can you call me in five minutes? OK. I assume that in those five minutes he put a recorder on the phone. Um, so I start this psychotic conversation with a guy that tells me, you're a genius, you're doing this party, this party is incredible, you, you gather a great team of people, but you're a son of a bitch, you want to get into politics because you want to do business and that. And I'm like, what the f do you want? Sorry. <laughs> it's been like 10 minutes like that. And uh, at a certain point he says, well, I know that um, you are requiring the signatures in order to get approval from uh, the judicial system of Buenos Aires to run for, uh, in, uh, for elections uh, beyond 2013. If you put one million pesos in an envelope in the name of this judge, you will get your party approved right away. And that was like a, an a, a incredibly scary situation because it was 
First of all, a person like literally asking for a bribe, uh, spoken, speaking about the name of a very important judge, one, I think one of the most important judges in Sarvini de Cubri, a very important judge in Buenos Aires. Um, and uh, the sensation that this person was uh, trying to record me, and like, like all these paranoid thoughts uh, exploded in my mind. It was extremely scary, and that was just the beginning. Uh, it, it, it was like, <laughs> politics is a very nasty game, and people are really, really crazy. But we thought, at least I thought, well, it looks like we are bothering someone. Uh, someone is feeling some kind of fear out of what we are trying to do. And we are the newcomers to this uh, uh, world called politics, and we must to learn how to deal with that, or, or we quit. It's, uh, there's no middle ground in that. So we were able to run for elections. We got 22,000 votes, 1.2% of the votes. That was a great first election for us uh, in 2013. It wasn't enough to get us elected, uh, to get the candidate in the Congress, but it did lead to the software. Uh, like Congress said, well, we're going to try your software. And all 16 parties in Congress agreed to put a bill on the software, and uh, those bills were debated with citizens. Over 30,000 citizens uh, engaged in the debate on each one of those bills. And it was the first pilot of digital democracy to be done, as far as I know, in the Americas, in the entire continent. So it was an incredible experience. And we were able to, to figure that the most voted bill of all the bills that were presented was a bill about improving working conditions for nurses in public hospitals. It was a very solid bill about reducing working hours of nurses from 12 hours a day to six hours a day. It was a bill that was, has been in a drawer for 10 years and, done, and put in the, in the platform by a minoritarian party, the Partido Obrero, the, working, the, work, the workers' party. And um, this bill uh, that has been dormant for 10 years suddenly got enough traction on the, on the digital platform because the citizens wanted that bill to be treated in, in the floor of the Congress, and Congress agreed to treat that bill in the floor because of the impact of the software. So that was like a whole three-year process of uh, going from an idea to actually moving a piece of legislation in the, in the, legal, in the legislature or the, or the Congress of Buenos Aires. Um, since then, uh, I've been like, connecting with groups of hacktivists throughout all of Latin America, and it's like a very interesting uh, sensation that you find out that there are a lot of crazy people in all of our countries that are feeling the same thing. Um, just three quick stories to wrap up. Uh, this guy, this guy found, it's a guy in Buenos Aires in Argentina that found a vulnerability in the electronic voting system. And he posted online the issues of the electronic voting system using the city of Buenos Aires. And he got sued, and his house got raided by the police because they considered him like a hacker that uh, hacked the, the electronic voting system. And he was just trying to help and say, hey, guys, this, this is not working very well. And interestingly, in four days, he received 20 bitcoins. That's around uh, $5,000 or 50,000 pesos, or even actually a little bit more than that. And that's an incredible thing, because he received those donations in support to, for him to be able to afford his lawyers and to buy equipment, because he, his equipment got taken. And that's when you see Bitcoin as a technology that is uh, signaling a, a, a support for, a, for an activist. Um, Another story is in Venezuela. I met, uh, in, while there were big protests in Caracas in, in early 2014, uh, this guy, Julio Coco, uh, he grabbed his phone and he shot himself uh, a video of ranting about the situation of the riots in Caracas and the case of a, of a person that got uh, killed by a random bullet. And uh, amazingly, Julio Coco got over, uh, went from 10,000 followers to 350,000 followers on Twitter uh, from uh, one week to the other. And Julio Coco does a lot of online activism, but he needs to remain anonymous, because if he does activism and he, his, his name or, or the name of his supporters are online, then he risks being uh, persecuted by the uh, Venezuelan government. Um, and the other case is uh, the same identical case of the Net Party, but in Mexico. Mexico had a reform that allowed independent candidates uh, uh, last year, and uh, Pedro Kumamoto, 
He is one of the leaders of the Wiki of the Wiki Politics Party. He ran as an independent for the state of Jalisco, and he got elected. He he's the first candidate with the same agenda as the one that we had in Buenos Aires, and it's incredible to suddenly go to Mexico and you discover like this twin that has been thinking about things in the same way uh, we did in Buenos Aires, uh, and it's logical because we belong to the same generation. We've been raised by the same kind of information technologies uh, that we, we had during our uh, teenage years. Um, so this is a new generation of leaders, an entire new generation of leaders thinking out of the box. Uh, they all need technology and they all use crypto, uh, Bitcoin, blockchain. I think that's a very powerful, empowering technology uh, that is going to make some waves in the future or in the very short term uh, future. And they are all in the developing world. Like this revolution is not happening in the dorm rooms of Harvard. It's gonna happen for sure in the developing countries because that's where there's an urgent need for this, uh, for an alternative of the status quo. Um, today I'm working on a, like a new iteration of uh, a, a more Silicon Valley flavored iteration of uh, the problem. Um, uh, we recently launched uh, democracy.earth. It's the first website in the world with a dot .earth domain, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and if you log in there, you will find out about what we're trying to do using the blockchain, using Bitcoin, and uh, hopefully build a decentralized uh, commons uh, on the internet for anywhere, anyone anywhere uh, in the world. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.